Excellent. So guys, X9. I always gotta have one false start. Right. That's our hypothesis. So X99 has just launched, Haswell E has just launched, and if you're watching this video, then you're probably interesting in finding out more information. To that end, I have a special guest here. It's JJ from ASUS. How you doing, JJ? I'm doing all right, man. Thank you for asking. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. I also want to say a big thank you to Jay, uh, as of Jay's two cents, because if you haven't noticed, I'm not in my usual location. We're actually at Jay's house, so uh, thanks, Jay. As if I had a choice. <laughs> thanks, Jay. We forced him. We forced him to let us film here. No problem, but, um, so this video uh, is going to be short, and we're going to really just focus on the motherboards. Now, if you guys are interested in a little bit more information about the CPUs, I'm going to have a video up specifically on those. If you're in interested in more information on DDR4, um, because these new motherboards use DDR4 memory, I'm going to have a video up specifically on that as well, so check those out. Also, if you're interested in a much more in-depth video on ASUS products with JJ, we're also going to be doing one of those, so uh, stay tuned for that. But JJ, these motherboards all feature the X99 chipset. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's let's just start from a high level overview, not specifically to ASUS, but generally speaking, what is new about X99? Let's say compared to the last enthusiast platform from Intel, X79. I would actually almost say every aspect of everything the, is new. Yeah, almost okay. every aspect of the uh, of the platform has really been actually extended upon. I mean, of course, you're going to have traditional things like you would expect, like SATA and PCI Express, and that it uses memory. So it's not like we're fundamentally changing whole platform architectural characteristics. Okay. Um, but as a whole, in terms of the kind of key specifications that a lot of users might be interested in, um, all of those things have pretty much been evolved and upgraded to either at least be parity with Z97, um, or even actually be superior in some ways to that. So if we take a look at it from the number of PCI Express lanes that the platform has to offer, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, an enthusiast uh, platform, that's really important. You know, how many cards can you populate? How many can you actively run at one time? You know, how many devices that are on the motherboard as a whole can essentially be run actively? That's all enabled by PCI Express lanes. Okay. So with this platform, you know, you're talking at a minimum 28 to 40 PCI Express lanes that the motherboard can support depending on the CPU. All right. um, so that's a big upgrade. So lots um, of add-on cards. Correct, but that's also a change from uh, X79. X79, all the CPUs had actually a the same exact PCI Express lane count, um, but this platform it's a little bit different. And how that affects you on the kind of the motherboard side or the chipset side is that the layouts might be a little bit different, okay. um, depending on that. So that's something you kind of consider between the CPU and the board uh, that you're going to be getting. Um, outside of that, storage has uh, gone ahead and been I think really beefed up uh, oh, for this platform. That was, that was going to be my next question. So we have excellent storage options. Not only do we have more SATA connect. Activity, mm -hmm. but we also have some next generation storage. Yeah, and pretty much the way I look at it is just every, every storage connection that you could want exists on the boards. Okay. Um, so you've got everything from uh, an extensive complement of SATA 6G connectivity to M.2 specification support, PCI Express support built into the chipset with okay. uh, with what's called the IRST driver or the option ROM uh, that's part of the serial ATA and the PCH. Um, so all the way around, you've got pretty much all the connections that you could ask for. So we have like, what, 10, 10 SATA 6G ports Th now? Th that's correct, all yes. All SATA 6. Um, we also have, uh, let's talk a little bit more about those new, uh, new memory, or, I'm sorry, new storage interconnect. So mm -hmm. uh, SATA Express. Correct. Um, how, how does that work? So SATA Express and M.2 are both actually interconnects that leverage the PCI Express bus. Okay. So pretty much what that just means is that we're able to bypass the SATA limitation and be able to offer much faster throughput, lower latency, and also have support for next generation storage devices, which aren't right now on the market, but they're going to be coming at a later time frame. Uh, they can use what's called MBME. Okay. Um, this is a newer type of kind of communication protocol, which is directly designed for flash storage. So this is like the successor to AHCI, right? That's correct. Okay. So that's a, that's something that's really awesome and we're going to see helping to progress the overall foundation of what you can have with high performance storage. So right. that's really exciting and Not that's something built in. specifically designed for Non-volatile memory, that's NVM, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and not necessarily held back by some of the stuff that mechanical hard drives. Uh, yeah, the AHA protocol, it's been around actually for a very, very long time yeah. since the advent of the original SATA spec. So overall time to progress and move towards something that can really take advantage of the flash performance uh, that is currently offered on you know all these different types of storage devices, whether they're SSDs or M.2 based devices or PCI Express based SSDs. Um, I think continuing in that same storage note, another improvement of course is USB 3 integration. It's okay. built into the chip set. So, so no more no more relying on add-on chips for that. You're going to have it natively? Yeah, you're going to have it natively, but you know, add-on controllers actually always, to a degree, actually can serve some functionality in terms of not only performance, but compatibility. Um, so uh, at least for, you know, uh, the boards that you look at might not always not be something that's uh, 
just as pure as having the chipset built into it. But um, by paper, you know, any board that you're going to buy is at least always going to have USB 3. The best thing that you can look at is that in all specifications, you've bumped up to the most current specs. That includes PCI Express. So you got PCI Express 3.0 across the board. Mm -hmm. So you got the most bandwidth for whether you're going to be running, you know, high performance SSDs, high performance graphics, graphics cards, uh, capture cards, or any type of devices that need and can utilize the fastest PCI Express. And I always love the enthusiast platform from Intel because it has such a long lifespan. Yeah. But as a result, X79 is so old now that we've seen so many new features introduced with uh, with Haswell and even with Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge um, that we're now just finally able to take advantage of. Uh, so that's that, that's really exciting. Now, um, one more quick note before we jump on to the, to the ASUS specific things, and that is you mentioned uh, the, the, gosh, IRST yeah. update. Um, so we're actually capable of, of doing stuff that we saw actually like with Sandy Bridge implementation with Z68. Uh, we saw, for instance, a smart response technology. So now we have that uh, capability as well. Yep, you have that entirely available to you so that all the way around, like I said, the storage on really X, X99 is really, really enthusiast class. About everything you could possibly want to do is available to you there. And then, of course, you know, one of the last touchstone points is that DDR4 inclusion mm -hmm. um, also helps to really complement storage in a lot of interesting ways because, you know, with the densities and the frequency and the bandwidth that's available, um, you know, RAM caches and RAM disks and things along those lines get really interesting and really mm -hmm. exciting. Excellent. Now, um, what we've been talking about thus far kind of applies to pretty much any X99 board that you might be looking at, but JJ's from Asus, and Asus, uh, you guys take some pride in the kind of special sauce that you uh, drop into these boards. So right now in front of us, uh, we have three uh, boards that are going to either be available at launch for X99 or uh, soon thereafter. So we have the X99 Deluxe over here, which is kind of the mainstream board, mm -hmm. white and black. In here we got the X99 WS workstation board, which uh, Jay has been drooling over pretty much all day today. Not that I haven't done as well. And then of course we have the R5e, the Rampage 5 Extreme over here for you ROG lovers. Now what sort of... Uh, sort of special things that you wouldn't necessarily find on other X99 boards has Asus dropped into, say, any one of these boards? What are your favorites? You know, that's really hard to say. As <laughs> always, you know, we put in a huge amount of design work um, in terms of special features and functionality. Um, but one really exciting one is going to be a specialized hardware design implementation uh, relative to what we're able to do when we really aggressively push the CPU and the memory. Okay. Uh, so it's a really special design implementation that we've got on all these boards um, that I'll be interested to see if people can actually figure out on what we're able to do to allow us to actually have some really impressive cache ratio performance and DRAM clocking. Well, that was very mysterious. So we're going to, so we He's saying that when we have the overclocking, the inevitable overclocking competitions with yeah. X99, you think ASUS is going to have some uh, some top tier performance? I think our track record speaks for itself. So. Excellent, excellent. All right, uh, let's let's move on to something else. What else do you have on there? So for us, I think we take um, you know bigger pride in you know the the class of the fan controls. For one, is of course always a big point. We've got that built in uh, to the motherboards and enabling you know a level of control across every single fan header. Being able to have that DC and PWM output control. Being able to map to multiple temperature input sources is extremely impressive. Uh, even Thunderbolt, right? None of these boards have natively Thunderbolt. On X79, I know a lot of guys that were doing content creation were like, wow, I would love to have Thunderbolt on there, oh, yeah. right? Um, but now every single one of these boards has support for our Thunderbolt 2 EX expansion card. So you can go ahead and drop it in there and you can be rocking and rolling with that fastest IO connection. And uh, we, we're gonna wrap this up, this video up now, but I, you can pretty much say that if you're familiar with the, the special ASUS features from the mainstream platform that we've seen uh, with Z97, uh, as well as even with, with Z87 and, and, and those boards that have come out. If you look at the segmentation, so for instance, five-way optimization uh, is available on the Deluxe as well as the workstation. Yep. Uh, a lot of the ROG features specific to like extreme high-level overclocking, that sort of thing, you're going to find those here. Stuff that you were looking for in the enthusiast platform for the past four or five years, um, apart from, of course, from the XM and any refresh boards that you guys did a great job with, um, you can now get in the newest platform with new CPUs, DDR4 memory and all that good stuff. So it is a, it is a glorious day for enthusiasts, uh, for high-end PC users, for anyone who does content creation, uh, work with video, or if you're if, if you you're just looking to build the baddest thing out there, if you you're want just all speed, about speed, and you don't care about anything else, and you want this to be as fast and as built as possible, 
this is the platform for you. All right, so um, again, guys, check out my YouTube channel because we're gonna do another video here where we're, I'm just gonna let JJ talk, and it's probably gonna be really long, but it's gonna be full of information. So if you want more detail about all these boards, check that out. If you wanna see more from ASUS, uh, the PCDIY channel, you can go to the website. Yeah, pcdiy.asus.com, or you can check us out, of course, on our own YouTube channel. All right, beautiful, so check those out if you wanna see more of JJ. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you all very soon. Goodbye. Bye from Jade. <laughs> that was awesome.